Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. And you got Luke. Luke, today we're going to be looking at a customer request. I guess it's listener request. Are they customers? Kind of. We serve them. We provide an invaluable commodity sure. product. We're looking at the oil and gas industry. Yeah. Fun fact. I don't know how this is going to go. We'll see. It's going to be great. Okay. I love this one. Fun fact. Start off the fun fact. Yeah. That's always a good sign. It's considered to be the biggest sector in the world in terms of dollar value. This really? is where the money's at, which is why I'm happy that we have a big sponsor today. Oh. We'll get to that, though. Wow. Yeah. First time sponsor. I know. I'm excited. I'm excited. So let's start off a little bit with what are hydrocarbons and where do they come from? I'm glad you did that research. You don't even like the word hydrocarbons, do you? I can't spell you? it if you gave me the hydro and the carbon. Wow. Crude oil and natural gas, which is what we're talking about here, are naturally occurring substances. Did you know that? I did. Do you know how they were formed? Dead dinosaurs. Dead di well, dead things. I don't know about dinosaurs. Mm, I think the good oils. The good oil is dinosaur bone? Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure Getgo uses only dinosaur bone oil. <laughs> well, that's good. So oil and gas are organic materials, which you are right. They are the results of the remains of plants and animals and mostly dinosaurs compressed in sedimentary rock like sandstone or limestone or shale so it's like uh it's it's their dead bodies it's like uh lettuce and veg vegetation yep and then it gets covered and then it gets pressed right yeah and heated a little bit too right yeah sure See how I'm like talking like the everyday person That's and you're what, being all fancy? I'm not really being fancy. Well. I mostly just read words. Okay. So there's that. So these different layers, you know, like you're saying, they get compressed and kind of heated and whatnot. Then the material transforms into oil and gas magically. See, magically is everyday man talk. It is. And, and uh, then it goes into the Earth's crust. Well, not always. Well, not always. I think, but I think usually, that's the commonplace. Yeah, is you usually have like it is. This, this this pocket of oil, but uh, oil can show up in a couple different areas, or that's, can be extracted from a couple different locations. This is true. Is that something you want to talk about now yeah, or later we on? Can maybe kind of hold on, hold off on kind of like where it comes from. Okay. Well, oil and gas are less dense than water, so that's probably good. That's why and, they float. And we've talked about in our lava episode. Uh, like the volcanoes one, we mm -hmm. talked about how there's a whole bunch of water in the Earth's subsurface. And so this means that the oil and gas then makes it way, makes its way through uh, porous sedimentary rock and towards the Earth's surface. And so then it gets trapped behind less porous rocks, and that's where these giant reserves end up mm -hmm. existing of oil and gas. And they're always in some kind of nationally protected... <laughs> Right, area up to in, cause problems yeah so that you can't get to it it's just like oh it's frustrating that is frustrating it's isn't very it frustrating because i i want to protect the environment just like everybody else does you and me both but at the same time i would really love to access enormous oil reserves so it's like this there's this this thing where I don't know. It's it, it's difficult. It's a tough balance. Are, isn't are, it? are we going to decide which is more important, preserving our natural resources or just decimating them with oil production? Or we, we can decide that sometime. Let's get through the facts first, okay. and then we'll figure it out. Okay. We'll I solve think the world's be, I think problems. You're going to be the bad guy here. Just you're saying. always the bad guy. So we break down this whole process into three things: upstream, midstream, and downstream production. Some companies do each of these three, but very rarely. Yeah. Usually, it's a whole bunch of companies working together to do all of these different processes. Mm -hmm. Processes? Processes. Processes. Okay, so upstream. Let's work on that one first, all right? And I know you're going to not call it upstream, but you have stuff to go along with this. I do, I do. So this would be the exploration and production phase of getting the goods do you mm -hmm. agree? All right. So exploration is really just exploring to find these hydrocarbons, so the oil and gas, and they use a bunch of different ways of doing that. So by a bunch, I mean two, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, there's kind of variations of them, but these are yeah. the two big things. Uh, geological surveys and seismic surveys. So basically they go, rawr, 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 and they drill holes in the ground. That was really good. It sounded just like an oil well drill. That's right. An oil well drill. <laughs> How did it go? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So a geological survey is exactly like what you're saying. It involves collecting and analyzing rock samples and kind of looking for features that indicate 
this is the type of rock where an oil field. Yeah, they don't always be. find oil. Is they the don't. interesting thing. No, a lot don't. of times they find things that would conclude that there could potentially be oil there. That's true. And then it also sometimes they do find oil, but they're like, Meh, not a lot here. Let's yeah. not waste our money. And that's the thing. So, uh, so we live here in in beautiful southwestern Pennsylvania. Beautiful. And up near my cabin, uh, they have all these like micro oil wells, and some of these are still active. So these things are like literally like the size of a car, and they're you know, you know, collecting oil on like a really small scale. Right. And I think that just doesn't happen and gas. very and gas. It, Usually it, gas. It's probably mostly gas yeah. they're collecting there now that I'm thinking about it. But it's at a really small scale rather than at these big large, you know, oil rigs floating out in the ocean kind of scale. We don't so. have big oil rigs floating in the ocean in Pennsylvania. I agree with that. We don't. Okay. Uh, your cabin's up by my hometown, is it not? Uh, sort of kind Give of. Give or take. You're kind of to the right. Oh, I'm to the right. 50 minutes. To the right. <laughs> That's how we do the map yeah. directions. All right. The other option is seismic surveys, and I like this one better. I didn't, I didn't see this one anywhere. I'm, I'm interested how this works. So it involves bouncing sound waves against the subsurface material, uh, so like off the ocean floor, yep, yep. and measuring the time it takes for the reflection to be picked back up on headphones my guess is if like there's on oil underneath it beats. takes it's either faster yeah beats by dr by dre. dr dre right sponsor <laughs> um my guess is that like the speed is either faster or slower if there's a potential oil reserve below the right surface. depending what's under there gotcha so it creates an image of the subsurface rock and then they say look at all that oil or gas we need to go get that. See, I, I never th- see the whole literally. I would never thought of gas. Like the whole time, you like when you said, well, "Luke, hey, let's research oil and gas." I never. Just go, not- I just. I. It just occurred to me right now that we could be talking about natural gas as well. And is- that's what's huge here. So that's kind of yeah. why it makes more sense to me. But the person who recommended this, I think, is more into the oils. The oil part of it. Gotcha. We'll get into that later as well. So we said just because you find it doesn't mean you actually you know, go after it. Yeah. That's okay. So if it determines there are enough hydrocarbons there, so let's say oil, to make it worthwhile, the well development begins. Then they got to collect it. That's right. And so just like you said, they use a drill with basically just a drill bit on it, not, you know, like a little one. They're pr- Have you ever seen the pictures of what these drill bits look like? It looks like, like an alien digging device. <laughs> There's typically like like three heads on it, and they're like made of all kinds of like crazy material so that they don't chip or break and can like, you know, break through super hard rock and I stuff I believe like they're that. made of animantium. Oh, I was, what's the one that Black, Black Panther, Panther has? Vibra- oh, vibranium. vibranium. Yeah, maybe they're vibranium. <laughs> Which one's stronger? So how do you, if vibranium is the strongest, sorry, segue. If vibranium is the strongest material, mm-hmm. how do you cut it to turn it into other things? That's a good question. Just maybe saying. you go to the guy that made Thor's axe and hammer. Oh, what's his name from Game of Thrones? Yeah, Tyrion. Yeah. You go to Tyrion and he forges <laughs> it. Okay, moving on. Yeah, wow. The drill bit's attached to a series of drill pipes, and the whole thing is rotated and chopped in there to cut away at the rock and get mm-hmm. to the goods. So once it reaches the reservoir, uh, the productive oil or gas is completed, and then you pump them to the surface. So that's, I think, the most common way of collecting right. yep. uh, oil. Like whenever, whenever you think of like um, the, the the Oilers, the the football team on the side oh, of their man. helmet, they got that little A-frame the, structure, and the do. oil is spurting out the top. I what mean, were that's... those called? Oil rigs? Uh, oil? I, I I think there's a specific name. Yeah. For, for those for that specific type but there's a couple other ways that they can gather it as well uh one is they do it through shale shale so shale basically takes uh basically the material shale that is basically permeated with the material that they want to get and then there's a process where they basically extract uh, the oil from uh, the shale. And there's a lot of that happening here in Pennsylvania, Mar- Mar- Marcella shale. And mm-hmm. there's people on both sides of the fence because the, the, the production process has some uh, maybe adverse effects on the environment and, you know, local waterways. And then the other way is oil sands. This one I think is relatively new. I don't know about oil sands. And this sands. one is happening. I'm fairly certain this is more like a, an out west, like North Dakota thing. I, my my crack research uh-huh, um, uh-huh. kind of failed me. Your team didn't really <laughs> look into it. Okay, but basically, so it's exactly what it sounds like. So you have sand that is basically 
permeate like like imagine like it's if you also took filled sand with oil and you put oil in there together now you got to separate the oil product from and then the, the ducks sand. walk on it and yeah. then they get covered and then in then oil you call dawn in and they gotta dawn. wash the ducks yeah. the cute little ducks I like those commercials gloves. yeah yeah so so those are the three that i think are probably the most common i'm sure there's some other ways and again i only focused on oil right. i totally no forgot worries about it's gas. all about the same they say yeah so before we finish up the uh upstream process okay. here let's take a break for a word from our sponsor and you said we got a sponsor I'm we do so so excited. So I'm happy to announce that this episode is actually not sponsored. What? I know. That's I know. It was so disappointing. Letdown. But I did want to say that we have a number of great shout outs. You are the worst. I know. It's actually been a long time since we've recorded. Like a live. Like, like actually actual together. together. Right. So here are a number of shout outs. Cormac G. He's an Irish guy living in Barcelona. Good so another Corny G. Another one of our Irish What's his followers. Name? Cormac. That's a sweet name. It is. Uh, funny thing, he promised me his t- tortilla recipe. He he spelled it out for me uh, for a shout out. Yet I'm not receiving it yet. So maybe oh. when he hears this, he will send he it over. Did he say you, James, or me? Because I'm fairly certain I'm more of a taco tortilla lover. If that's what we're if that's what tortilla means. In, it, I in, think it is in Gaelic. I'll share it with you. Okay. We also have Arnold M. He's a Wichita State University. Go Shockers! Ooh, ooh, mechanical go engineering shockers. student. Is there a mascot? They're the Shockers. Yeah. That's a sweet mascot. It is a sweet okay. mascot. And uh, he tells his buddies about us, so that's pretty great. So we're gonna have a big Wichita State following. Nice. Mike M. He was born and raised in Pittsburgh, but what? he's in Texas now. Oh. And he works at a power plant and wants me to know that everyone in the industry calls it a turbine. Tur- so <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, awesome. He makes a good point, though, that no matter how you pronounce it, you still get paid the same. Nice. Daniel B. also wrote in. Oh, Danny B. Suggests that we look into the toy Marble Works, which I looked at it, and it sounds like a pretty cool toy that we missed for something that engineers might want in that okay. episode. Is this a newer toy? No. He had it when he was a child. Okay. Okay. So, last but not least, Jacob L. wrote in and gave us the idea for this episode, as he works in the oil and gas industry in Scotland. He probably is ashamed of what we've done to it here, <laughs> but hopefully it's not that bad, and he gives us some love. Well, and hopefully he can, you know, comment on the episode, maybe make some corrections. Because I'm when sh- we get to our two hundred fiftieth, yeah. we can. I'm very. I'm. I'm sure that this was a hundred percent accurate. I think so. What we've done. Yeah. So far. So if any of you want to write in, email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail dot com. We'll send you some sweet stickers. Yeah. Really sweet ones. Also, if you subscribe on iTunes or wherever. Ever, that would be great and write us a review yeah we need we need the reviews i just got a five-star review for us last night i was talking to someone at cornhole and she gave us a five-star review nice boom like right. right then right then was like i love just talking to you you're so smart your podcast she must never be amazing an, she never listened to an episode but who cares anyways. all okay. right moving on moving finishing on. up upstream so okay. once you're pumping this stuff out Uh, You have to separate the mixture from liquid hydrocarbons, gas, water, and solids, removing all the non, let's say, sellable parts. Yep. Unsellable? I think unsellable parts. And then selling off the liquid hydrocarbons and gas. Uh, The fluid from the well is directed to a field separator uh, located on a well pad. Mm -hmm. These are, like, apparently the technical terms in the industry. What do I know? Uh, And there's three components, oil, gas, and water. You separate them. Uh, and then then it gets into all of this like wet versus dry. Did yeah. you do any of that? I didn't. You didn't. So it's basically the different uh, types of oils and uh, or gases, and this is kind of like what it will be used for. Wet's used for some stuff, dry's used for other stuff. But we actually have a section later on about what it's used for. So okay. let's skip ahead. Okay. What do you think? So midstream. Mid- this is this is this is the making the individual products, right? Correct. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, no. No. I, okay. so, so you have a lot of info. I got like one sentence. Can I read it? Oh, my... yeah. Let's hear your <laughs> this sentence. Is, this, is, this is my crack research. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, oil is often a dark, sticky liquid that cannot be used without changing it. <laughs> 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 the, the first part of refining... Uh, and again, I only focused on oil. Yes. The first part of refining crude oil uh, is to heat it basically until it boils. Uh, this boiling liquid then separates into different uh, liquids uh, and gases that are then distilled in, in a distillation column. So if you imagine like a big giant tank, you boil it, and 
as it separates, you know, the stuff at the bottom is going to be more of like the, the thicker material like petroleum and then, you know, paraffin and then diesel and then petrol is at the top. And then I don't know what else is after that. Maybe it's the natural gas or something that comes right. out of it. But basically, it's just a giant boiler. And I don't know if that's like, I'm sure there's other ways to process it. But, sure. but the picture was a really cool picture they showed. Basically, it showed this tank with, you know... The gas comes out at this point. The petroleum comes out at this point. The the, the diesel comes out here, uh, and that might be an oversimplification. I'd love to hear what your crack research. And I'm, I'm loving using the term crack research. You, I don't know you've why. used it at least it's nine like, times. At least, yeah. Um, I I got a lot, and I don't really want to get into it because I think you broke it down for the everyday, the everyday person. The everyday person. Yeah, and I really appreciate that. Uh, before we get into midstream, which is pretty boring. Uh, it's it's really very easy. Uh, I wanted to talk about drilling a little bit. Is that cool? <laughs> right. I knew you liked it. So there are a bunch <laughs> of different ways that you can drill for hydrocarbons. Horizontal, multilateral, extended. And I have a little bit about each of these. And the main things is I want to yell about stuff. Is that okay? Okay. So horizontal drilling is kind of what we're thinking about. You uh, You start with a vertical well, and it turns horizontal within the reservoir of the rock and then you go gather up all of your good stuff. Is that fair? Yep. So it can be used in situations where conventional drilling is impossible, like drilling straight down, um, and makes it more cost-effective. Uh, it reduces the surface disturbance, so that's good. Yep. And it can produce much more stuffs, like 15 to 20 times as much oil and gas compared to vertical wells. So horizontal drilling, I think that's the most common one. Uh, they have multilateral drilling, which oil and gas, uh, when it's located kind of close together, but there's different pockets of it, they can actually use the same well then to reach out and grab oh. each of these. So that's kind of cool. And then again, it reduces the amount of disruption in the area, and uh, the cost is then cheaper as well because okay. it's still just that one okay. well. Extended reach drilling. Uh, obviously, it extends the reach of the drilling. That's literally what it says. I'm fairly certain this is the one that uh, Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck used. To uh, blow up the... To blow up thingy? the asteroid? Probably. That's where I did all my research. Ben Affleck was in that? Yeah, he was the... Ben Affleck I only remember and Bruce Tyler. Willis and, and her in it, yeah. Yeah, Ben Affleck and Liv Tyler were... Sorry, never, that's where all my research never came watched from, it, was Armageddon. So. Uh, they can now reach five miles that's down crazy. That's crazy. to get all these goodies, so that's pretty cool. Complex path drilling has multiple twists and turns, kind of like a good novel, like Game of Thrones. In interesting thing. I did read something about that one. They use this one whenever they have, like, if it's more cost-effective to go around certain structure. yeah, structures like or, or pockets of material right. that are going to take longer or be more not yep. as cost-effective to drill through, they can actually say, oh, let's make a right here and then go over, you know, 300 yards and then down. Uh, so they use that one whenever they need to get around certain structures. That's exactly right. And so my one yell about this, it's okay. like a, a mini rant we'll go with, okay. is do you know anyone who has like a well on their property? And usually like in PA, it's natural gas well. Mm. I, I, again, up near my camp, there's a lot of different people yeah. that like near my campground. Well, you don't that I know, know I don't know them personally, but I, I do know people that do have these gas wells on their property. I know one, and they get pretty good money. But the thing I want to complain about is they'll basically find these pockets and be like, oh, here, we're going to pay this person money and just straight up lowball you. And then they'll like go over and tap into all of it underneath everyone else's oh, property and basically steal all your goodies out rats. from under you. Yeah, it's like, that's not fair. Just because the well's not on my property, I don't get any cash money. I wonder if I, I got a big enough backyard. You do too. You yeah. got a pretty big. I probably be, don't have anything in there. But they could go over and get the neighbors. Oh, yeah, my neighbors. Watch out, neighbors. I'm coming for your <laughs> oil and gas. <laughs> could you imagine showing up one day and there's a, there's a gas well in your backyard that your neighbors would think? <laughs> <clears throat> so the next part of this is midstream, okay? You did midstream, I thought. No, that's the last part of midstream okay. here. Okay. Is considered the collection and transportation. And this is super boring. So yeah. it's basically just picking this stuff up. Like a guy comes, he gets a briefcase and walks off with it but not really so there's four main methods the biggest one is ships especially if you're using offshore rigs yep. and then you have to ship them somewhere other unless you have like a pipeline already designated for doing this so okay. some people have these like underwater pipelines and then they break and then we have big problems yeah yeah um, and then there is also trucks 
You can see those giant trucks Everywhere. on the road, giant tankers. Uh, I don't feel like that's very efficient, but that's one way of doing. Railroad is still very big on this. And then pipelines is the safest and most economical. So even pipelines running across the land are Did, still that way. I'm not sure if you were born yet. Uh, Probably not. One of You're the old. largest inland oil spills was right in western Pennsylvania down... Um, uh, in like Elizabeth Forward area, West okay. Elizabeth area. It was, I was probably in fifth grade, sixth grade. And one of those giant tanks you see, those big, huge ones with the spiral steps that go around the side, they're uh-huh. like, you know, like a football field wide and like half a, half a football field tall. Uh-huh. It actually ruptured and it was just like, it was the worst inland oil spill ever for like the longest time. You and should then, have gone and like gathered it all up. You would have been rich. I know. And then Russia beat us because they spilled oil somewhere else after that eventually. Always so. have to be better than us. Yep. All right. Before we get into downstream and uh, the products we're making from this, as well as some of what the largest producers yep uh let's take a break for this week's luke's rant yeah so i'm keeping the rant really close to home here with uh, oil and gas it's the price of gas i mean i i don't mean to i hate to complain about something but as i started doing this research isn't that what this is all about i'm sorry it is i'm sorry it is so i'm gonna share all the statistics but like right now the u.s produces 14 0.46 0.46 million barrels of oil a day. And then wow. that gets turned, and those millions of barrels per day get turned into all these other things. But one of the byproducts is obviously gasoline. It is. It makes me so mad that I pay what I pay for gas. And then whenever I go from like one state to mm. another state, and it's like 40 cent, 50 cent difference in some cases. All of our neighbors are cheaper than yeah. us. I like why, like, Pens- why is Pennsylvania like one of the highest? Like you go to you go to West Virginia cheaper, Ohio cheaper, New York cheaper. Is New York cheaper? I'm pretty sure they are. I know Ohio is. It's and like significantly. So I just oh, yeah. I, I just don't get like I was under the impression that there was some federal regulation that kind of controlled the price of gasoline. There was some you know different legislation way way back in the day to make sure people didn't get gouged. Like how does that happen? It's just it's just, it's really frustrating because you and I both drive bigger vehicles that we do that, that I can actually gas. see my gas gauge move when i drive sometimes like turning like starting it yeah so i it, it, it's just very frustrating to me and, and and this is why that debate of do we access those resources that we have access to so that we can lower the price of gas for everybody here in america or do we worry about the environment and not access those oil reserves because if we accessed it our gas could potentially be cheaper because we don't have to import gasoline from you know other countries so i i don't know that's that's my rant the price of gas is just stupid i agree with you so all right downstream 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 processing refining manufacturing and distribution of these processed hydrocarbons so we can use the example of pumping gas like you just talked about uh into your vehicle you of choice new jersey I think it's still the fact you can't it yeah. just but it just changed and people oh. didn't know how to do it. I know in Oregon they did that too and they were just like I don't know how to pump gas. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I've I, gotten yelled at because I got out of my vehicle there. I did that there. once I in like, Oregon too. Sorry. Huh? Who knew? Um let's see the downstream process turns the hydrocarbons into something like gasoline for your car and then on the processing side for the processing side then in the distribution side that's getting it to the gas station getting it to get go having them block off a bunch of pumps and stick yeah. that big hose in the ground into yep. their tanks and filling it up so that you can pump your gas okay i need one i i, I tried finding this for the for the show couldn't find it and oh. i and i want one of our intelligent listeners to answer this question how come there's like three or four different grades of gas one truck pulls up and puts one hose in to fill it up. Is that accurate? I, I've never been at the gas station and like a truck pulls up and like has like different hose. It doesn't look no, like. No, but I mean, on like the maybe they fill up one tank here and one tank there with maybe, another truck. Maybe they do, but I, I, I've do. never I've never seen different like you know spouts on yeah. a uh, a tanker truck when they're filling up. So I got you. That's a good question, Luke. I, I appreciate that. One of, right. our, one of our listeners, I'm sure, knows. Yeah, I think so. So what's the different products derived from oil and natural gas? Here's a bunch. Diesel, petrol, gasoline, lubricants, kerosene, jet fuel, asphalt, heating oil, clothing, detergents, building materials, amongst other things. Plastics. Plastics. Um, did I say medicines? Oh, yeah. Like 
Yeah, they like, make like everything. Yeah, comes from everything oil. comes or has from oil. oil as a component in it. Fuel oil and gasoline are the two largest volumes of products from the oil and gas industry. Petroleum has some interesting uses, in particular the pharmaceuticals, fertilizers, solvents, and plastics. And therefore, it's very crucial for a bunch of other industries. So not only would your killing the environment reduce the price of gas, but it would also reduce the potentially price the price of consumer other stuff. products consumer that goods. use petroleum-based material in their fabrication and manufacturing processes. Uh, so before we get into any more about this, what do you think? Should we destroy the, the grounds? Uh, Kill those little ducks? I, I feel like... Get oil in I their feel feathers? like if we got like Elon on board, right? This guy this guy is... The muskers. If we got muskers on board for a way to access these enormous oil, res- oil reserves without destroying the environment. Because I love the environment. You know, I have a daughter. I want to make sure that we, she has a nice place to... You have a yard. You know, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I like the idea of protecting the environment. But at the same time, I think we need to balance that with leveraging the resources we have access to. And I think we're smart enough to do it. I just think there's just a lot of politics happening right now that prevents it all from happening. I, I think we should keep things clean here in America. Well, I would not think you would have said that. I do. Well, I love the natures. Uh, have you ever camped? No. <laughs> no. Do you hike? Do you I bike? Mean, I don't like walking. No, I don't bike. <laughs> Jeepers. But you love the natures. But I like ducks. Okay. And okay. I don't want them having okay. oil in America. Now, Russia, you know. Yeah. Okay, so... Moving on, uh, I have a little bit about production. Do you want to talk about that too? Uh, I, I don't I mean have like pro- actual I, numbers. I, I have numbers, let's and then, numbers. I, and then I, I want to make sure we do a little bit of history at the very end let's, because let's some of this numbers. is local. Okay, so I'm going to do. This is the country status. Hold on. Uh, do you know that a barrel is 42 U.S. gallons? I think that's also a uh, a buttload, isn't that? <laughs> that was one of our units. It's, but it's I an don't official know. unit. It's a it buttload is. of oil. Okay, I'm fairly certain it is. I did not know that. Okay. Uh, so I just did the the top four. Uh, U.S. produces, like I said, fourteen point four six million barrels per day. That's a lot. They make up fifteen percent of the world's popul production of of oil. Uh, oh, yeah. Next is Saudi Arabia. They do uh, twelve million barrels per day. They're thirteen percent. Russia is coming up in third place at a little over eleven. Um, and then Canada, this is crazy, from Russia to Canada, it goes all the way down to 4.8 million barrels and only 5%. So there's a huge gap between uh, third and fourth place there. So, Wow, very good. Yeah, I was looking at the largest companies out there for uh, output. Okay. The largest one I saw was Saudi Aramco, and I think they make all of the oil production in Saudi Arabia. Any like U.S. companies in that list? There is. Exxon Mobil Ooh, came yeah. in at number uh, three. Okay. Exxon's number three? Yeah. The National Iranian Oil Company, I believe it's called, is number two. Okay. Which is not too much bigger than Exxon. Uh, PetroChina's huge. BP is big. B- BP U.S.? No, uh, BP not U.S. Okay. Uh, I guess... For Europe. Yeah. What, what you might call it? The UK. That's the one. <laughs> what London. <laughs> What's the London's? In England. There we go. Really struggling. The Queen. And Chevron's on that list as well. Okay. So so a lot of big companies so out Get-Go there. So GitGo is not on the list. GitGo is not. I don't think that they can. I'm really trying to get Giant Eagle to sponsor us. Man, if Giant Eagle sponsored us, I don't uh, know if it's the right target audience, but that's, that's okay. Right. But uh, yeah, apparently apparently they also have these own re- their reserves that they own. So Saudi Aramco has just the like the biggest reserve it's like twice as big as anyone else's so interesting they'll be going for quite a while okay, okay um i'd I, love to do a little bit of history i would i would like to you hear your else? history okay yeah, so nothing useful nothing useful I, I mean i have a couple other facts but they're not really okay that good. so uh the first successful oil well in all of north america was established uh in oil springs ontario canada in mm. 1858 wow so a little wow. shout out to our Canadian northern okay. brothers. And then here's this this is the one I love. So petroleum uh, became a major industry uh, in the United States following the discovery at Oil Creek, Pennsylvania in 1859. So a is that year oil later. City? Yeah, so Oil City. O- oil Creek is the actual creek, obviously, that goes through there. And it's interesting. So on August 28th, 1859, George Bissell, uh, inventor of the Bissell vacuum. Is he? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
and Sir Edwin Drake. You've probably heard of Drake's well. Uh, they actually uh, drilled the first uh, oil-producing well on that site in Oil Creek in Titusville, PA. Um, Did you know they used a divining rod? A divine, you know, the, the stick. stick. Yeah, no, I, I, I heard that. Water. I heard that they used that. Okay, okay. Uh, and again, I'm I'm keeping this all uh, relatively U.S. based and uh, close to Pennsylvania. So um, the first submerged oil well. So this is like the uh, the platform wells that are like on top of water. Uh, the first one was drilled on a platform built on piles in the fresh waters of uh, Grand Lake St. Mary's in Ohio. So the first time there was ever an oil rig on water was in Ohio uh, back in 1891. And then finally, uh, it's called the uh, the Prudhole Bay oil field. This the is the what? It's called the P-R-U-D ho. The Prudho? Prudho. Prudho. Okay. The Prudho oil bay field is the largest oil field in the United States in terms of total oil production. It was mm. discovered back in 1968. And it began production in sixty in seventy seven, following the completion of the Transatlantic Pipeline. Wow! Through uh, two thousand five, that pipeline has produced, or that field in the pipeline has produced and transported thirteen billion barrels of oil. And that's up through ni- two thousand five. Wow. I, I, that's I, a lot of barrels. So I don't it's have probably more up, to up to more date. now. I would guess it's up to a lot more. It. Yeah. So fun fact, shoot. I went to Oil City and saw the well as a field Drake's trip well. when I was a youngster. I, I, I drive past it every time I go up to my cabin. Yeah. You can see it. It's like right there. It is right there. It's pretty cool. It's okay. Did you know that some of the biggest oil companies in the United States were headquartered uh, in Oil City for like years and years and years? I did not know that. Until like they realized, yeah, these oil reserves aren't as big as we thought, and then they moved headquarters they out. We're so. smart. Yeah. So. Very cool. All right. Well, I think we did justice to the oil and gas industry. I think we did too. We, we really nailed it. I agree. All right. Well, hopefully everyone else agrees as well. If you do, write us a great uh, review on iTunes or wherever you listen. What do you say? And I need the answer from somebody. How do they get different grades of gasoline out of one truck? And All you right. might be right. Maybe a different truck shows up the next day with the high test. I'm usually right. All righty. All right. Well, until next time. See you.